Uh, well, let's, let's, let's open it up. God, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being back. Who's back at HQ? Who's, who's been here before? You, you melt my heart. Thank you guys so much for believing in us and, and, and supporting us and, and for feeling the magic that we... How, how cool is this, by the way? How, you like our brick wall and all that stuff? Dave Coleman, Dave Coleman special. Uh, who's got a question? Raise your hand. Uh, yes, right here, right down in front. Get that lady a mic. Hurry up! <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. I'm Tony. Hi, Tony. And, I'm uh, Zach. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to you meet know. you, too. Pound it. Awesome. Um, I'm from Florida. My best friend is from New York. And yeah. we actually got to see you in first date. Fantastic. And we loved it so much that the bailout song is our ringtone for one another. Well done. Yeah. And um, I actually went back to New York a second time in order to see you during the closing weekend. But then... A uh, first date? Yeah. Okay. Renee ended up getting strep throat, so we pretty much just spent the whole weekend feeding her soup, making sure she wasn't. I'm sorry dying. to hear that. Hopefully, yeah. she's not still dealing with that. No, she's good. Good. Yeah, but I just was wondering if, especially since now you're a Tony nominated. Yeah, I, that's, yeah. that's officially. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. I was just waiting for one person to bring it up. I'm out. <laughs> Uh, yes, continue. Yeah, no, I was wondering if maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, your first Broadway experience and maybe sure. especially what it was like closing your very first Broadway show. Especially Absolutely. I can, I can totally talk about this. You guys want to hear about that kind of stuff? Yeah. Fantastic. So um, it was great. Next question. I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, so, uh, it, look, I grew up my whole life. I was just this spazzy theater nerd. I mean, that's, you know, I, I didn't just make the nerd machine because I didn't have any concept of what that meant. I mean, I literally grew up playing video games and reading comic books. And, but probably, probably the thing that made me the most nerdy was I was in a, hi Shannon Fox. Uh, I was in, uh, <laughs> yeah, see? Once you're in the fandom, girl, everybody knows you. Uh, so I was, I, I, you know, I was spazzy and, and just loved entertaining people and I found theater and I was like oh my god this is where I think I belong and and uh, so I loved theater and kept doing theater until I was blessed enough where I I you know got open doors for me and I got to be in TV and film and get to got to do that stuff which I'm so grateful for um, but always wanted to get back and do Broadway one day or not back to I mean you know back to theater and do Broadway because it's like the highest level of of what that is and uh, and there was a few things that almost happened, but I, I really wanted to make sure that whatever my first Broadway role was, was something that wasn't a revival and it wasn't a replacement of, of somebody else because, at least in my own mind, I, I thought, well, if I go and do that, then there's a really good chance that everybody who comes and sees me, it'll be my first thing on Broadway, so all the, all the Broadway theater goes will be, will be judging me against the last revival or the last person who was playing that role that I replaced. And that's a tough thing to get over. So I was really waiting for something like First Date. I was waiting for something that was a brand new show. Nobody knew anything about it. And I could kind of make it my own and people would be able to see whatever the Zach brand of theater acting was. And, uh, and people enjoyed it. And then She Loves Me came around and that was a revival, but I had already kind of put myself out there in an original show. And, uh, and my agent for, you know, um, when I got the offer for She Loves Me, he basically, he, he was like, so here's the offer, uh, you can't say no. And I was like, I was like, oh really? And then I researched it and found out, you know, all the people involved were, I mean like the A-list of Broadway actors and our director Scott Ellis and our choreographer Warren Carlyle and our musical director Paul Gemignani, who, if Paul's watching this, Paul, I love you so much. I had no idea who you were when I took that job. I had no idea. Because I was also, as much as I loved theater, I was also super, like a Broadway Luddite. Like, I, I only knew the shows that I had ever done in school theater or community theater. I didn't really know. I didn't grow up on the East Coast. My family didn't drive in or train into New York to go see Broadway shows. I just didn't know them. If I wasn't doing a, my own show, hi, Donna. If I wasn't doing my own show or, you know, doing a, a show in, uh, in school or in community theater, I was playing video games or something, you know? I could talk about video games all day long, but I couldn't necessarily talk about other shows. And so then I found out who Paul Gemignani was, and I was like, oh my God, you've done everything. Everybody knows who you are, and Scott and everybody. So my experience on Broadway has been incredible. I mean, I've only done two shows, and, I, and then I, and, and for She Loves Me to get nominated for eight Tonys, and me getting included in that was a huge honor. Um, and I want to do it for the rest of my life if I can. But I, I, I need to do it in spurts because eight shows a week is the most gnarly thing 
I mean, that maybe an actor can do. I mean, it's, you know, I'm not toting around a gun and like helping defend people's countries. And I give nothing but props and love uh, and thank you to all of our armed service men and women who keep not only our country safe, but all the countries of the world. And I want, we don't need to get into the politics of everything in the world right now, which is a really gnarly place. As you probably could tell when you got your bags checked when you came into the venue. This is the first year we've had to do that. And that sucks. Sorry, this is, the, this is what happens when you, at panels, we rabbit trail. Uh, so as that pertains to Broadway, uh, but um, so it's been a really incredible adventure. And for anyone who came out and, and saw, anybody actually see First Date? Wow, a lot of people saw First Date. Well, well I know you did. Uh, did anybody see She Loves Me? Anybody came out? Wow, fantastic. So, strained it. <laughs> How cool is that, right? I mean, I'd like to say we've been doing it a little longer. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but that was cool. It was like, it was the first Broadway show to ever be live streamed. I mean, that was cool. That's history, you know? And I didn't get to watch it, clearly, because I was doing it, uh, but I heard it was really good. Did you guys, I mean, I, uh, Dave, Dave was saying it was like super top notch, like really well produced and shot. What's that? So good. So good. So that's cool. Yeah. Excellent. Good, good. I, I, I realized uh, after that, I was on Twitter and I saw people basically just started taking all of my reactions and turning them into memes and things. I was like, well, if you've memed, you've made it. Yeah, what's, oh yeah, hey, anybody wanna buy something? Yeah. Well, that, that was very enthusiastic, yeah. <laughs> this was something that somebody made. I know, right? Uh oh, oh my God. I almost, I almost lost my booze. I mean, that's not booze. Uh, it's on both sides. These are handmade with all of our Nerd HQ and Nerd Machine things. I've signed it. I'm going to model it for you real quick. Yeah. Who wants that? I'm going to start at 20 bucks. 20 bucks? Once. 40 bucks. 40 bucks. 60 bucks. Wow. 100. Anybody want to beat 100? 200? How much? 300? Anybody want to go higher than 300? Once, twice, sold, sold, sir. And you're gonna look great in these. You really will, you're gonna look great. Find one of our volunteers afterwards, you'll get your ears and they'll take your cash. Thank you, that's very generous, thank you. And by the way, that was more than one smile. You just changed a kid's life right now, right there, with, with some despair. Uh, next question, in the back, way in the back. Get that, give that lady a microphone. Oh, hi, darling. Hi. How are you? Good. How you doing? Hey, do you guys like our merch this year? Anybody, anybody gone by the, oh, you probably haven't been by the merch booth yet, have you? <laughs> well, you should go. That's one of them. All right, yes, go. Hi, Michelle from New Orleans. Hi, Michelle from New Orleans. Um, so, like yourself, I am a huge Diz nerd. Yep. Um, so I had a question, if you can talk about it, the new Tangled series, that's about to Yeah, out. I can talk about it. So I don't know what, I, well, I, I, I don't know what you want me to talk about. Okay, well, I'll try. <laughs> the details. Well, um, I know Glenn doesn't do backstory, but I was wondering if we, <laughs> might, if we might see a little bit of Eugene's backstory, like where he grew up. Um, to be perfectly honest, I, I, I genuinely don't know, but I, I hope so. I think so. I mean, look, what, what were, what the, the writers and producers and Disney, everybody's been like super awesome. I love that we, I love that we get to do a series. There was always this thing in the back of my mind after the first movie. I was like, I hope we get to do a sequel of the movie. And then we didn't. Um, and that's fine. Uh, but uh, no, but, but beginning to do a series, I think is gonna be kind of even more fun because it's not just two hours. It's a lot of hours. I don't, I don't know how many episodes. Uh, but I think yeah, it's gonna be multiple seasons and it's gonna be on Disney Channel. It's gonna be a slightly different animation uh, style, thank you, <laughs> it's early, right? Um, a slightly different animation style, but we got everybody back, me and Mandy and a bunch of, I mean, basically I think all the voices of everybody that was already established in the film are all back. And, um, and yeah, and there's other things. <laughs> uh, we, we definitely dive into more of the characters. We just have so much more time to do that. So I think, yes. There you go. Uh, next question, yes, right here on the aisle. Boom, right there. 
Hi, I'm Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Um, I'm a speech therapist, so I actually worked with a student with a cleft palate in my school this year. That's awesome. So while I always liked Operation Smile before, it means so much more to me now. Yeah, um, it's like a hands-on for you. Yeah, especially because you know this is a kid in the U.S. who still had a not yeah. completely repaired, and I can't imagine what it's like in a third-world country. So I was yeah. curious, out of all the charities in the world, how did you find Operation Smile, and why is that the one that you felt so motivated to do all this for? Well, I, I've uh, I've answered this before, but I um, and I think a lot of people know. So I'll, I'll give you the quick rundown, which is basically there are so many things in Hollywood where, as a celebrity, you get asked to do like celebrity bowling, celebrity poker, celebrity whatever, curling. Um, <laughs> I think that's only in Canada. Uh, that'd be pretty fun though, wouldn't it be? I'd be one of the guys with the brushes. <laughs> um, we're gonna work on that. <laughs> we're gonna bring it to HQ. Uh, so anyway, but, and they're all, and all these for charities, right? And they all say, what's your charity of choice? And I never had one. And part of it was because I'm a Libra and I have a really hard time uh, being unfair. Like was, we're all about justice and balance. I'm like, well, if I give money to these guys and I like commit to this charity, what about all these other charities and everybody's hurting? And, but I had a lot of other friends that all could find a charity and I was envious of them. They, they were either like for animals or for kids or, uh, built, you know, uh, for Africa or, you know, all there, there's so many people that need help in the world, clearly. And I really wanted to find that. And then I was singing at this event with band for T, uh, band from TV with Greg Grumberg and Hayden Panettiere and all that way, way back in the day, and that's all for charity, and I got to donate money from that appearance, and they kept hounding me, well, not hounding me, they kept asking me, what's your charity of choice, what's your charity of choice, we need to know, and so I just thought about it and prayed about it real hard, and then in the course of like five days or like one week, I saw five billboards and five commercials, like back to back to back to back. I'd seen them before, I'm sure, they just didn't resonate in the same way, and I really felt like that was God saying, yo, check this out, and so I did, and then it just, it just rocked my world. It rocked my world for a myriad of reasons, one of them being, I was super blessed to be, you know, this middle-class white kid in America who, by the way, regardless of whatever your, your income is, if you're born in a hospital in the United States, that's basically taken care of. That's just the number one. Now, you might need speech pathology afterwards because that's a different thing, but at least the surgery is done. Uh, and, but I didn't have any of that. I was born healthy, fine. I got massively dinged up teeth that I had a dentist and orthodontist. Thank you, Dr. Asano, you're a rock star. Um, <laughs> And, and that helped lead into my career. Like, this is part of how I make a living. And I just started thinking about that going, wow, like the things we take for granted. And then I started thinking about what if I was a kid and I was afraid to go outside and smile? And that wrecked me. I was like, oh my God, these kids are, uh, they're, I would, I, would, I would be afraid to actually enjoy life if that meant smiling and therefore showing that I had something that was wrong with my face. And and then I dug deeper and found out one in 10 kids actually dies. So it's not even just a cosmetic situation. It's a real life and death situation. And even if you don't physically die, how much could you die inside because you are so affected as a child that you can't go and smile and enjoy life. Um, and so, yeah, that I, I was like, all right, I think, you know, when I started feeling, <laughs> when I started feeling the way I'm starting to feel right now, <laughs> who's got Kleenex? Um, uh, that's, that's when I was like, all right, <laughs> I do. Uh, that's when I was like, I think I need to go down this road. And so I just started, I just literally just started raising money for him. I didn't contact anybody. I was just like, all right, I'm going to start putting money there. And then after a while, I get a call from Mob Smile and they go, who, who are you? And why are you sending us money? We've never, we've never, you know, uh, and we, I sat down with Bill and Kathy and, and Robin, who's been here for a year. By the way, Robin, who's, who's normally with us from Op Smile, and my sister Shekinah, who you guys all know as the, the, the queen bee of, of volunteers, literally both had babies within three days of each other. So neither one, yeah, let's give it up for those guys. So that's why they're not here, slackers. Um, but anyway, so uh, yeah, and then I met with all of them and I just loved them even more. And they're a great organization. And I got to go on a trip with them to Honduras and be in it. And by the way, uh, I think um, when you guys go, if you do any Smiles for Smiles, or you use any of the photo booths, Johnson & Johnson is a partner with us this year. They're, every single photo to taken with these photo booths, they give $1. So it's not just like the Donate a Photo app where you can donate one photo per day per person. Every single photo that we take in these photo booths, they donate a dollar. So go crazy. Go take so many photos. And we have VR. Oculus gave us VR headsets that uh, Operation Smile brought a 3D or a, a 360 camera down to one of their operations. So you can put on the Oculus and you can be in the operating room and you can see what it's like. To, so we wanted you guys to experience all the change that you get to bring. And that's a cool way to do it, right? So dope. So anyway, that's the long and the short. 
Uh, also, I should probably say, if you have a question that I've already answered before, and a lot of, like, Chuck movie things or whatever, I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's try to get questions that I've never answered before, if that's at all possible. Yes, right here. Boom. Pineapples. Pineapple. Pineapple. Pineapple! Ah! Run! Hi. Hi. Um, first, I wanted to say, this is my third year. Third, third year. year. Thank yeah. you. Um, but I wanted to say thank you, because last year you were crazy busy, and I was sitting outside just, like, charging my phone but I must have looked sad because <laughs> you stopped and you just, like, in your busyness, you stopped and said, hey, are you enjoying yourself? How are you doing? Um, which meant a lot to me because I'm a teacher. And yeah, I give it up, teach. teach. Um, so my question for you is uh, our school just became a performing arts magnet school. That's awesome. And a lot of our kids are struggling with, like, being themselves and being creative. Yeah. And I hope to be that teacher that encourages them. So I wanted yeah. to know who like teacher-wise has encouraged you in all of that? Um, you know, I mean, I, I would say that my, my life, I think all of our lives are, it's very difficult for me to like pinpoint one person that had an impact on me because I feel like anyone does, everyone does. You might randomly bump into somebody that just speaks some truth or some love into your life that you need in that moment so bad and that encouraged you and kept you either on a path that you needed to stay on or veered you off a path that you needed to get off of. And the things that people can encourage you in, the words that you can use, it can be a complete stranger, it can be your parents, it can be your friends, your family, it doesn't matter. So, I mean, I had some, I had some great teachers. Um, Mrs. Hill was my drama teacher in high school. We're actually having, uh, we're, we're trying to have, a, or they, they are, we're getting a whole like get together, like she, she moved to Arkansas and she's coming back to Ventura. And a bunch of her former students are all just gonna get, to, get together and hang out. I, I hope I can make that. Uh, I had a great teacher in elementary school uh, named Mrs. Morris, uh, who I loved and super encouraged me. Also thought I uh, was a plagiarist when I wrote this awesome poem. So thanks, Mrs. Morris. Uh, I could have been a poet, I don't know. But, but probably not. Um, <laughs> And I'm glad I'm, well, no, I'm glad I'm not. I'm glad, that whatever. But she's super encouraged. Like, I was so, I can't even explain to you. I used to write sketches. Like, I would, re I would do, like, Weird Al kind of stuff where I would rewrite s lyrics to songs. And I, in sixth grade, I thought the cool thing was, I'm going to take up time in class, <laughs> and I'm going to do my sketches for the, for, the, for the class. Had no idea how unbelievably nerdy everyone in this class, like they were looking at me like, because oh, by the way, I was a new kid this year too. <laughs> and I'm like, this is how you make friends. And, but she would let me, she would be like, you know what? That's your creative thing. And if you want to go and sing some like, welcome to the jungle spoof, that's welcome to McDonald's, by the way, <laughs> by the by, what was I thinking? <laughs> um, and, but she let me do it. Um, so, uh, so you have plenty of people, but what I, I mean, the biggest thing I would say, and I probably, I think I've said this before, but I, uh, man, I wish I could just grab a hold of every kid who's in middle school, elementary schools. Uh, are you an elementary teacher? Middle school, the hardest. Wasn't middle school the worst? Like it, <laughs> yes, <laughs> high school. Elementary school, you're all still just kind of kids for the most part, right? And you're just kids and you're running around and you're, you're cool. High school, you got the clicks and all that nonsense. But I think by that point, you've kind of established a little bit of an identity for yourself and you've found at least who your people are. But in middle school, it's just, it's so shitty. They're being, <laughs> kids are so horrible. They are. They're so horrible. They, and, and look, and I, I can't, you can't exactly blame the kids entirely because there's a lot of that that's coming straight out of their home. And they're acting out because God knows what's going on at, at home or the other kids they're trying to impress. And I walked around half a day. I didn't even realize. I'm not, probably wasn't half a day. But I certainly walked from like one class through a break to another class. And I put my backpack down. And I had this massive loogie that was just on my backpack. I was the nerd. Oh, no. I mean, look, it happens. I was a total spaz. I was a total nerd. And at that point... People didn't, that would, it, you know, what we love, it wasn't really all that much loved back then, you know? And so if you talked about it, you were into it, you know, playing Magic the Gathering or like literally, I mean, we wouldn't even cosplay. We'd just run around pretending to be Wolverine and Gambit. All my buddies wanted to be Wolverine and I was like, I'm Gambit. They're like, whatever. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. Gambit's awesome. Um, <laughs> yes. 
Um, uh, but we'd run around doing that. So, but it, again, rabbit trail. The point is, what I would say to these kids, and I wish I could grab every single one of these kids, and I hope they're all watching these panels. For the love of God, I, I, where's the cameras at? Am I, I'm looking at the cameras, I think. Don't, middle school and high school are not the universe. They are not, and they are not even the tip of the universe. It, you, you, you are going to have the most rude awakening if you think that you, it, the popularity level that you can reach in high school is what, it, that, that means anything. Because you get out of that and it's like, oh my God, I wasted so much. I personally, even though I loved all the things that I loved, I still wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be involved, you know, with the cool kids. I wanted those kids to think I was one of them. And I wasted so much energy and time that I could have been learning how to play an instrument or learning of, of another language or getting better grades in school that would have all been way more valuable than caring about what some dipshit thought about me or how I dressed. And if every kid, yeah, rock and roll. But if every kid, if we could just shake them so hard that their head was, just, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, then maybe this world would be a far better place. And, but you know, you can just, all we can do is encourage them and sit them down as much as we can and go, you're worth something. Your worth is not dictated by dickheads. Your worth is dictated by you and the people who love you and the amount of, and the amount of work you get to do on yourself. And that's the journey, right? How much work do we do? Do we work on ourselves? How much do we take, put down the things like Pokemon Go? <laughs> like, no, but here's the thing. I got Pokemon Go. I literally just caught like two monsters outside. What's a Scyther? Is that any good? I don't know. Um, they're like, yeah, yeah, Scyther's good. Yeah, Scyther's good. Um, but look, it's, it's amazing, right? Like on one, on one hand, I actually saw this really great meme. It was on face, flo flying around on Facebook, which was, it was something like, so let me get this straight. A bunch of people have been sitting on their ass rearranging uh, uh, cartoon candy for five years and nobody says anything. But now people are getting up out of their homes, walking around, hopefully not into traffic, uh, but they're meeting other people and now you know, people have a problem with it. And then I read this awesome, another thing, this, this woman whose son was autistic and was having such a hard time, you read this one? As having such a hard time socializing and all of a sudden, they get Pokemon Go, he's super stoked, they go to a park and he's running into other kids that are playing and he's socializing. And I go, that's brilliant. That's so awesome and beautiful. However, if it's taking up your entire life, if anything is taking up your entire life, this is something I've been thinking about. Actually, I think I might, if I was ever going to write a book, people have asked me if you would ever write a book, and I think this might be the thing I would write about. You are what you reach for. This is the thing I keep telling myself. If you are constantly reaching for video games, that's your life. If you are constantly reaching for your friends and your family and other people, if you're a parent and you're reaching for work, how much are you reaching for it? And how much are you reaching down to pick up your kid? How much are you reaching for alcohol? How much are you reaching for cigarettes? How much are you reaching for things that are good for you or not good for you? Because what you reach for is what you become. So the more that we can reach down to these kids and the more they can reach for their actual dreams and not trying to reach for popularity, the better off they're gonna be. So I would encourage them in that regard. Yeah, for sure. You are what you reach for. All the way in the back. I got to give the back love because, you know, they're in the back. You are killing me with that. Oh, my gosh. I need tissues. <laughs> Get it, girl. But I want to, this is not exactly a question, but I want you to know that you are loved beyond comprehension. You, you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, I, I feel it. I feel I, it. I mean, I, feel I saw it. on Twitter that there were some it. issues with, with the tickets and things like that. There always are. <laughs> well, you know, like, and I felt like mama bear fierce protector for you. And I think I just want you to really understand the difference that you have made. It's absolutely amazing. And I wanted to thank you. I, I, I so appreciate that. But I, I have to say, I, I receive that and I appreciate that. This only exists, and I really do mean this. This isn't me just being diplomatic. It really only exists because of every single one of us. I know the vision that God put in my head. I, knew that, I know the things that I want to accomplish in the world, and this was one of them, and I'm so glad that I didn't give up on it <laughs> because there were a lot of moments when it, that would have been the easier thing to do, and we want to be able to do this as long as we can. We want to keep making it the best possible experience for all you guys all the time, but it, it doesn't have Dave Coleman, that man is the, is, he is the brass tacks. Yeah. That, when, I'm, when I'm off going and hopefully getting to, to continue to live my dreams and be an actor, and hopefully the more work I get, the more 
spotlight we can put on HQ and all the cool things that we can bring you. But our sponsors like AMD and Xbox and Johnson & Johnson, every single one of these volunteers, all of our crew, my freaking dad for God's sake, the Papa D, the mascot, the... the <laughs> If you, and by the way, and, and to that extent, if you guys get a chance at all, and I hope you do uh, during this weekend, throw these volunteers high fives. Throw my dad a high five. Go talk to him. He'll talk to anybody. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, thank the people that are working all of our gaming kiosks. It takes everybody. It, it, it literally does. So thank you and thank them. And thank you. And what's your question? That was it. Oh, okay, I great. I really wanted you to feel loved. I, I, was I do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right there. Right there. Right. To you, sir, with the glasses. Yes. Hi. Hi. My name's Ricky. Hi, Ricky. Um, <laughs> so a lot of actors sort of go through uh, and hit up, you know, Broadway, TV, film, um, but sort of one of the pit stops that everyone makes, I guess, in, in, as far as roles go, is they want to play a villain at some point in their career. So if you were to pick, I don't know, either a villain from history or fiction that you wanted to play, who would it be and why? Well, I wanted to play Deadpool, but <laughs> that didn't happen. Um, although, since we're on the subject, because I brought it up, um, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, you're the man. You crushed that movie. I'm, and, and again, a vision, right? That guy had that vision. And he's Canadian. It makes sense. Um, for the character of Deadpool, I mean. Um, uh, and and he stayed and he stayed with it and he and he invested his own time and his own money and vision into that, and that's I mean that movie fucking rocked. It was awesome. It 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 it, it challenged so many things about the genre, about filmmaking in general. It was super funny. I laughed my ass off, uh, and I'm a, I'm I'm picky about stuff. So I really mean that when I say like Ryan, and the whole team behind that, the writers, the direct. Uh, it, it was it was awesome. Uh, so other than Deadpool, who would I, what villain would I want to play? Um, I, I don't know, to be perfectly honest. I don't know that it's been written. Or, or I mean, maybe it has, and I'm not, I've not read it. But um, I, I, would want, I would want to play, I would certainly want to play a villain that, um, I think the best villains are, don't believe, they don't think they're villains. They think they are 100% in the right. Uh, but I would want it to make sense, too. Uh, you know, there sometimes... There's villains that 100% think they're in the right, but the, the logic of the movie is like, <laughs> you're clearly not, like, you're so dumb. You're the dumbest. I can't even, I can't even. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, any, any villains that you guys love that you want to see, whether it's me or somebody else, just shout them out. Any, 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 what, wait, you have, you, is there a villain you like? Um. See, it's hard, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'll get back to you. I'll think about it. Uh, yes, right here, right you, yes, right there. Wait, wait for the microphone. Wait for the conch. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good. Good. So, um, I wanted to first of all thank you. Obviously, I'm not from here. I'm English. You're not? I'm not. <laughs> I get Canadian a lot. I'm not Canadian, obviously. Um, I just want to say, I know you don't like taking the, and it is everybody and the volunteers. Obviously, I know all of you. Hi. Um, I'm a volunteer too, is why I know Yes, everyone. you are. <laughs> yeah. I am, yes. Um, you guys have created somewhere that people can come. We were talking about it. We touched on it with Pokemon Go, that people can come and make friends. I've come to this alone, and I met people in the queue, spoke to them, things like that. Um, and touching on the Broadway thing, would you ever consider, because that live stream was so popular for She Loves Me, would you ever consider doing a Broadway benefit for Operation Smile? Subscriptions could go to them, that sort of thing. Live tickets, that sort of thing. Um, have a seat. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, they, the, the quick answer is yes. The long answer is, uh, I, the long answer I can't get into, um, because like HQ, I have other kind of, I don't know, uh, out of the box ideas that I'm constantly cooking up all the time. And one of those ideas has to do with Broadway uh, and has to do with streaming <laughs> and has to do with charity. Um, and that's all I can say on that. <laughs> uh, but heck yeah. 
I think the more you can incentivize, look, that's what, that, I, I've said this before. Life is incentive, 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 incentive. I want to create ideas where you, can, even if you look at the first, the first angle of it, you go, well, I might not, but then you look at the second angle, well, that's a, and then you look all the way around this, whatever this thing is and go, yeah, there's a, of the 10 reasons to, to go and do that thing, I'm down with seven of them. Because you might not like everything that HQ, you might be like, yeah, I'm not really into gaming, or I'm not into tech, or I'm not, I don't really care about the panels, or I'm not gonna go have a, I don't like dancing, and shame on you. <laughs> but that's totally, that's totally valid. The point of HQ was, well, how do, we, how do we pack as many things, as many incentives into one place as possible, where you, hopefully you make it a no-brainer, where people go, I gotta go to that place. And when you leave here, you don't just feel like you were baited into it with incentive. You walked away feeling like that was totally worth it. So the, all the ideas that I think about are, well, how do I take that and do that and bring that around? And, whoop, whoop, you know, and then, I don't know what that was, but... <laughs> we'll just leave that alone. Uh, and, 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 you know, and make it the turducken of entertainment, you know? And, and people go, that's the best turkey, duck, chicken I've ever had in my life. That is a turducken, right? Um, so, what, what, what happened? Oh, no, no, it's okay. I'm still answering this question. No, don't worry about it. It's all good. But what, what is or, or have a seat and enjoy. That's fine, too. We can do whatever. Um, so, that's what I'm, so I'm, I'm definitely working on something in that world. And as soon as I can talk about it, I'll talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, so you had a question. Yes, no, it's okay. Don't apologize. I didn't want to be that kid in the classroom. No. Why, is there, like a, is there a big gap right back there where there's no seats? Who bailed on my panel? <laughs> Gonna have some words. Uh, yes, hi. Oh, my name's Caitlin, and I just wanted hi. to take the time to thank you. This is my third year coming, and thank last you. year I was lucky enough, I met Shekinah outside and gave her- Who? Shekinah, your sister. I'm kidding. I'm, I was to <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I, if I can't um, give her shit, I don't know what I can. Go ahead. Um, and I gave her a piece of artwork, and she she gave it to you, and you guys auctioned it. Yeah. And I was I wasn't here, and I was so excited. My friend Courtney was texting me. She said, "This is your artwork." Like, Ugh. that's awesome. So I have another one for you. Oh great, yeah, yeah. Hand it to one of the volunteers, and I'll get that thing signed, and we'll auction it off uh, at the next panel. Awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the one you made last year, right? It's different. It's oh, but it's a new one. It's a brand new one. Yeah, it's fantastic. Cool. Yeah, hand that up. A lot of people that are going to be at your panels. That's great. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's give it up for Caitlin. That's very cool. <laughs> By the way. Since we're on the subject, uh, I, uh, I, I get, like, at, when I was doing She Loves Me, like, I got all these really cool, awesome gifts that people put a lot of time into. And, uh, and I, I think I can speak for a lot of other people, like Nathan and myself, or anybody else who gets, you, when you guys, like, put your time and heart and creativity into making us these gifts, they are awesome. Know that... Uh, unless we build a shrine for ourselves in our home, there's really nowhere to put it. So I found that this is a great opportunity to pay that forward. So forget, if anybody's ever given me, if you, if you find it on, at an HQ auction, I really appreciated it when you gave it to me. And now we're gonna use it for a better cause. So I hope nobody's feelings get hurt if I end up auctioning off your gift. Okay, thank you. That's all I wanted. Uh, I was, I was, I, yeah, I'll, go, I'll go right down here. I'll come back. Hello, handsome. Uh, oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> My name is Tyler. I've been here before, so. Tyler, Tag welcome it. back. Yes. My question is also related to the Tangle TV show. Yep. I don't know if you're allowed to say anything. Yep. But how many, you have a great, amazing voice. Thank you. Um, and of course, Eugene does as well. Sure. Uh, how One and the same. Yes. How many songs have you recorded for the show? I've I personally only recorded one song so far. It's it's a it's a it, it there is a musical component to the show. It won't be as heavy as the movie because uh, that's just really difficult to do. That's so much music, you know. And and also when you're making a movie, you have a lot more time to kind of fine tune everything and tweak it, and you can re-record and whatever. Um, there will be music. I don't know how much music, but I've recorded one song. At least one song. Yeah. It's going to be great, guys. It's going to be really great. Uh, right here. You had your hand up, right? Yep. Right, yep, right. right here. Nerd Herd shirt right there. Bada bing. Hand that mic up there. Hey. Hi. Uh, Emma from, oh God, from England. Emma from England. 
Yeah, um, my how many, how many uh, Brits in the audience? I know one, two, three. Three, all right. Well, don't try and start a coup. <laughs> you are totally outnumbered. I think our country's screwed at yeah. the moment anyway. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, my favourite moment as a fan was a few years ago, actually, um, in Birmingham, when about a few hundred of us went yeah. to Subway. Yeah, were you there? Yeah, you made yeah. me a, a picture of you um, with my chicken Subway that you made me. You're welcome. Absolutely lovely. Bit too much mayo, but apart from that, it was... I, I wasn't in charge of mayo at the time. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, it's just, what was, what's your favourite moment as a fan? As a fan? Yes. Um... Favorite fan moment? Um, I don't know. I think probably meeting Tom Hanks was probably the coolest thing. I mean, as far as like people that I look up to and that I, you know, get all Twitter pated and tongue tied and like, what do I say to this person? I don't know. What to do. um, yeah, I've just, I mean, I've just admired that guy's work for so long, so long. And it's the kind of career that I've always wanted to have. And I've talked about this before, too. But, you know, like when I did She Loves Me, it's the same story as You've Got Mail. It's the same story as Shop Around the Corner, essentially. And the character that I played, George Novak, that, that character was played by Tom Hanks and Jimmy Stewart. And those are two guys that I... And part of the reason I knew I wanted to do that show was because both of those guys had played that role. And I was like, I, I got to. I've got, if those guys played this, this role, I've got to play that role. Because I love what they brought to their careers and what Tom continues to bring to his career. And, you know, that kind of like every man relatable guy that, you know, can still stand up for himself, but also has a soft side and needs Kleenex every once in a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would think, I would think meeting, meeting Tom Hanks, I'm, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that like totally just rocked me in that way. Mm, no, I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, look at you, sir, with the glasses right there. Hi. Hi. Uh, a lot of people know me here as Scorpio, so hi. Hi, Scorpio. Hi. I see your tweets. Okay. Oh, maybe that. By the way, I see all y'all's tweets. <laughs> um, if you think you're getting away with anything, you ain't getting away with nothing. Continue, Scorpio. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you right off the bat for calling out my hero, and she will yell at me if I call her name, so I won't say it, but she didn't say anything about pointing, so I'm going to point. Okay. <laughs> and we'll just leave it at that. All right. Uh, second of all, congratulations, Uncle 001. On what now? Uncle 001. Oh, Uncle 001. Oh, I thought you uncle. said on gold 001. I was no. like, did I just uh, upgrade somehow? No. Uh, uncle. Well, did I got to check my Pokemon Go right now. What happened? <laughs> the microphone was away. Did I get a Vaporator? Well, I don't know. So congratulations on being that's a not, brand new not, I know it's not a monster, guys. I know a vaporator is not a real thing. Uh, last, Continue. Last year was my first year at, uh, at HQ. Well, it's about time. And uh, as a newbie, I accidentally called you Chuck, so I want to apologize from that right off the bat. Because, and, and let me tell you why. So when I first discovered Chuck, I did a, a Zach deep dive, and yep. I found out everything you, you do. I hope it was gentle. <laughs> it was, it was. It was, the, it was the boop that you were talking about. And then about. I was in. <laughs> Uh, and I discovered everything that you do, and this, uh, and I, I thank you for that. I want to touch on what she You're said. You're at, at 100%. Um, so anyways, my actual question is, uh, I was an actor in high school, so actor to actor. Yeah. Uh, um, what is your method of getting into character? Do you have a specific method of getting into character when you're on Broadway? Do you, like, you know, face this way and, and do certain a routine? What, what is the way you get ready? No, I... I um... I mean, I, look, I think, I think more often than not, as actors, we're, we, you know, with, with few exceptions, not that we all don't, I think every actor thinks they can play every role. I think. Maybe not. I don't know. I, I certainly always, since I was a kid, was like, oh, yeah, I can, I can do that, and I can do that, and I can do that. And, you know, if you're, you get an audition for something, you're like, yeah, I could, I could play whatever that, whatever that thing is, dialect, character, whatever. But the truth is, more often than not, you're getting cast as some variation of yourself, for the most part. Guys like Sam Rockwell, Gary Oldman, who I have so much uh, respect for, they not only have the talent, but they also keep getting the opportunity. And sometimes you've got to forge your own opportunity, because a studio or a network might not just trust that you can play some weird, crazy, Gary Oldman-esque character. Um, so sometimes you have to create that for yourself. But... Uh, if you're doing character work like that, then you really gotta, I, what I do is I just start thinking. I just literally just start thinking like them. I start thinking like, 
well, how do I, you know, how do I feel right now? What am I doing? And who are these people? You know, like, and the more you can kind of get your mind there, the more then that starts affecting what your mood and your tone and all that stuff is. But if you're not doing that and you're really just kind of doing what I, what I call life acting, which is essentially just trying to bring something to life as real as possible through you as the cipher, then the most important thing, and I, you know, and to that extent, I'm not doing anything other than just trying to be as honest as I can with the words that I've been given. So if, you know, the, we're having a scene and let's say this is the scene, then I'm trying to think to myself, okay, well, how would this character sit up here like this in this way with this microphone in his hand, looking very handsome and, <laughs> uh, repping merch and, uh, and, and answering your question. So it's, it's, it's more that, you know, because, uh, you, if it's not honest, people see through that stuff. Uh, and, and sometimes you get the opportunity to not have to be fully honest with something if your character is not being honest and they're lying like Chuck had to do for five years with certain characters. I'm telling you, like, the, one of the greatest things that ever happened in that show for me was when I finally, was like when I could finally tell Morgan, I was like, thank God, thank God. Not only was it fun, but it was like, I was so, that whole element of like, oh, I'm on, a, I'm on an install, you know, or like lying to Ellie for something, it was so, it got so monotonous and I hated it. And also like, and Chuck hated it because Chuck didn't want to lie to the people that he loved so much. Wow, that's, that's a crazy rabbit trail. I, I didn't even think we were going to go there. But anyway, so that's the kind of stuff that, yeah, I would get out of here, bug. Uh, uh, <laughs> the power. Uh, uh, little man in the back. Little man in the back. Yes. Yes. Was it, jo was it Josh? Yes. Josh. Um, Big Josh. I was wondering, I am a young actor, and I was wondering if you like Broadway or TV better. Hmm. I actually don't, I don't like any, any one of them more than another. I, I, I like them all equally. I love them all equally. I think they're all equally incredibly challenging and incredibly rewarding in very different ways. So with, uh, with stage, um, you know, you, you, the rehearsal schedule is really gnarly. And then the show schedule, if you're doing Broadway, especially you're doing eight shows a week. And it's like your whole life. And if you're doing a musical, you got to be super careful about losing your voice. And which is why in years past, I have not been doing this as much and had other people help me. Um, but um, so that's, but, but you get a live, have you ever, uh, Josh, have you done theater before? Do you do theater now? Yeah. yeah? Okay. I love that you cupped your, you're like, yes. Um, <laughs> So, and, and what, so you know then from having a live audience that you, there's a really special connection, uh, a symbiotic, uh, if, I, if I could be so bold as to use that word, uh, connection where you are feeding them energy and they feed you energy back and it's such a beautiful thing. Um, and you're also learning as you're going in that, but you're also doing the same material every single time. And if you do that eight times a week for two, even just two months, you know, I always say, you know, telling, especially with comedy, telling the same joke for a week is okay if you have to. Telling the same joke for a month is really weird and hard. And telling the same joke for six months is like, you don't even know what's funny about anything anymore. You're like, oh, where did we even begin? You know, uh, so it, it's, there's a really distinct challenge in that. Uh, but it's also really rewarding and amazing with a live audience. When you do TV and film, um, it, you, you get to make kind of more of a precise piece of art in a lot of ways because you can use special effects and all these different things and, and, and it also lives forever because especially now with, you know, online and Netflix and, or DVDs, I mean, we can watch these things forever. Uh, also, the money's better. That's nice. Um, if you can get, it's nice work if you can get it. Um, so yeah, I think I like them all in different ways but I, I, my, my goal would be to go and do Broadway and do that for a bit and like really scratch that itch and work out those acting muscles and then that makes you miss TV and film a lot more and then you go back and do that and do that for a while and then when you're missing theater you go back and you keep seesawing back and forth. If I can, if I'm blessed enough to get to do that the rest of my life, I would, I would totally do that. Yes, right, you but blue shirt, blue shirt. Sorry, fellow Libra. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. My question is, what is next for you this coming year or the next year, what's coming up for acting? Where do you see yourself going? Um, have, are you guys familiar with, oh, two minutes? Only two more minutes, really? Holy crap. <laughs> hey, by the way, don't we have a clock? Did we, did we ditch the clock? Let's talk to somebody about that. Um, <laughs> um, are you guys um, 
familiar with uh, the whole Captain Marvel world, right? So I am not in that. Um, <laughs> oh, I had you for a second. See, it was honest, wasn't it? Felt like a really honest moment. Um, I, sorry, I had to. Uh, I, I, I'm doing, um, there's, there are some things that I am going and doing. Uh, I'm gonna do an, an indie comedy uh, with some really funny, talented people in LA soon. I'm gonna do um, a couple days on another film after that, and then I'm gonna go back to Toronto uh, to go do a six-part miniseries Actually, I'm not even sure that I can talk about this. Can I even talk? Where's Tay? She's going to be so upset with me. Actually, I probably shouldn't talk about it. I'm going to go. I, I can't because I can't I can't scoop the, the I can't. If it hasn't actually been de declared, what am I saying? Uh, if they haven't talked about it, I can't I can't talk. But anyway, I'm going to go do that. And that's it's cool. It's like a period piece and uh, it's six parts, uh, which I love. I mean, I, I, I've said this for years. If I could do mini series for the rest of my life, I would totally do it. By the way, has anyone watched Stranger Things? I was expecting way more of you that have seen that show. It is so fucking great. It is so great. Uh, children of the 80s. I mean, I'm assuming a lot of us in here are children of the 80s. It is everything great about the 80s. It is like if Spielberg and Wes Craven had a baby, and it was like mostly Spielberg, but you're not totally sure because you think they might have cheated on cheated with John Hughes a little bit. Like maybe, maybe like the mailman with John Hughes, because there's some straight up John Hughes moments in it. It's so great. You should, don't, you should totally go check that out. And we got, yes, you in the, in the yes, with the, reaching the highest. Yeah, sorry, right behind you, hon. Yeah, right there. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm Gabby, and I'm from New York. Hi. And I got you came to She Loves Me, I think. I what? remember. You did? Four times. Yeah, I remember. I'm, good, I'm pretty good with faces. I don't remember names very well. I'm, well, I just said my name. Um, Qu oh, okay, quick yeah. going. So I love She Loves Me, and it's super important to me and my family. Thank you. And, and I was wondering, what was your favorite song in the entire show? Uh, wait a minute, Gabby, did you are, you, are you the one that organized that thank you book? Yeah. Thank you very much. That was really sweet of you and everybody who put those letters in. That was really kind. You're going to make me cry. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> Go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm kidding. Okay, you can sit. Ha have a seat, have a seat. Uh, but I would say my favorite song in the show was actually uh, Nick uh, Barish's Arpad song, Try Me. I just literally from, from the, when I started listening to all of the songs on the, on the Broadway cast recording from the 90s, I just loved it. I loved how energetic and earnest and fun it was. And, uh, and then Nick was crushing it in rehearsal. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be such a great number. And it, it kicks off the whole second act. And that's a big thing, you know? Like, you really gotta set a tone for where we're going. I mean, Marichek, you know, we think may or may not be dead. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> By the way, which is such a weird thing for a romantic comedy musical. He may or may not be dead, <laughs> but he may or may not be. Um, and, and it's just a great number. And uh, honestly, like, you know, Jerry Bach and Sheldon Harnick, they just wrote such great music. They, they really did. And, and I was so stoked that I got to be George and, and sing those songs and, and have people. One of the craziest things, I call She Loves Me the most, the, 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 the most famous Broadway show that nobody's ever seen because so many Broadway people know the music and people who aren't from Broadway know the music, but they've never seen the whole show. They, don't, they have no idea what the context of any one of those songs are. So I had people coming to me that have been doing Broadway for years, but had never seen She Loves Me. And then after seeing the show and after seeing me sing She Loves Me, the title song, and they would go, I get it now. <laughs> I never, they, were, they would use that song for their auditions for years and they had no idea what any of it meant. And then in the context with Vanilla Ice Cream and She Loves Me and everything. So, and thank you by the way for coming four times and bringing your family and your friends and thank you for that thank you book. That was really cool. Guys, I, got, I think, do I have time for one more? One more? One more, one more? One more, I'm gonna come back Excuse over me. here. Excuse me. What? Is, is, it, is this where the gym's at? I'm looking for the gym. <laughs> Well, they didn't know that was gonna happen. Hey, guys. Of course, by the way, of course he's looking for the gym. Do you have any other ad lib you could come in with? I truly was on the way to the gym. Well, go, go find the gym. Oh, uh, <laughs> Ryan McParlin, everybody. Give it up for Ryan McParlin. Oh, God. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna see him. Yeah. All right. I just wanna come say hi to y'all. And I love you, I love I you. Love I'll see you, we'll see you. Yeah, he's gonna be around. He's gonna be around. Thanks, guys. Um, all right, I don't have time for one more. Is that true? 
Oh, I do have time for one more. I do have time for one more. I gotta, I gotta bounce back over here. Uh, uh, I, okay, Le fellow Libra, fellow Libra. You're giving me two hands. Yes. You're directing air traffic right now. Give me the mic! Okay. I'm Raciel from uh, Mexico. You're, Ro Rocio? Raciel. Ra from Mexico? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> de Mexico. Yep. So, soy de Mexico. Bueno. <laughs> Uh, I, I, mean, I was going to say a bad word. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, my question is for you. Uh, like, uh, from all your roles, current, past, real life, acting, because you're so diverse and everything, which one is the more challenging for you? Um, I, I mean, I would say, if, if you're, like you just said, if, if I can include life, then I would say the most challenging role to play is yourself. I mean, it is, you know, I, I, I get protected with crew and cameras and words and, you know, going and pretending to be somebody else can be very challenging, but being the best you, the most honest, vulnerable, kind, patient, you know, all the things that we, we hopefully are all aspiring to be and do for other people in this world. And if we all hopefully did a lot more of, or if a lot more of us did, would make this world so great or so much better, hopefully. And that's the challenge, right? That's the real challenge. Everything else is, that's all gravy. That's all, you know, if, if I never acted again, that'd be a bummer, but I'd still be alive. And I'd still go try and find something where I could make an impact on the world and do some good in the world. In fact, I'll leave it on that. And I say this every year. If, if you guys feel empowered by this weekend, if you, in, in what you get to accomplish with us in these panels, in the Smiles for Smiles, which by the way, I'm gonna do a Smiles for Smiles right after this panel if you guys wanna go queue up for that. Um, and you know, if you feel led to get involved with Operation Smile, awesome. If you feel, if you don't, go get involved with something. Go challenge yourself with your time, your energy, your resources to go and make even just one other per person's life better. And if we all just made one other person's life better, think about it, that's, that's the, that literally is the whole world. Well, if we all chose a different person, I suppose. <laughs> if we're all just going at one person, they're gonna have a great life. Uh, um, but so yeah, I would say in, you know, in the kind of big philosophical way, the hardest role that we play is us, but it's also the most rewarding, right? I mean, it's, it's so great. I heard this quote once, you know, and I'm gonna butcher it and paraphrase it, but it was basically like, I don't, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna get to the, to the day of my death um, uh, having no scars or, you know, or like all nice and tidy and clean. I wanna, I wanna slide into my coffin like I'm sliding into home, all busted up and dirty and bloody and with a drink in my hand being like, whoa, what a ride, you know, like that. I wanna get to the end of my life and, and, and be on, I mean, you know, if we're fortunate enough to actually be on a deathbed, sometimes we're gone, that's what it is. We don't even have those moments to, to think back on life. But if I do get that opportunity, I wanna sit in that bed with the people that I love around me and go, wow, like we did something. So there you go. Thank you all so much for being on the first panel of Nerd HQ 2016. You guys are awesome, you're rock stars. Go buy some merch if you feel like it. High five the volunteers on the way out. Thank you for being a part of raising so much money already. I love you all, God bless you. And we'll see you this weekend, bye.